Thank you, everyone. Laura, just stand up for a second so everybody can see. We're going to split this presentation, but I'll lead off. We do apologize for interrupting your viewing of the Olympics, but perhaps we'll get that back on after, after this uh, brief presentation. Uh, it is a pleasure to be here in Adelaide. We've had a, an opportunity to walk around uh, this wonderful site uh, and to see everything that's happening from K through 12, and we're just really, really impressed with the facility and with what we're seeing uh, in, the way, in the activities in the classrooms and, 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 and particularly in seeing the kids and the teachers working together. So it's, it's really a pleasure to be here. Uh, in many ways, we, we feel quite at home because we're seeing a lot here that <coughs> really ring true to us and resonate with us uh, in terms of our work back at High Tech High. So we're going to uh, spend a few minutes, about half an hour, just discussing what we do at High Tech High and why, um, and then we'll open it up for, uh, for Q&A. Uh, so High Tech High started back in, the, uh, back in 2000 with one school, uh, we now which was grades 9 and 10 at the point of time. We now have 11 schools in the San Diego area, uh, spanning from K through, uh, through 12, and we also run, uh, as uh, Lynn mentioned, a graduate school of education, uh, open to our own uh, staff and to teachers, uh, educators from the uh, San Diego area. But we started from things that students were saying about high school in, the, in national surveys in the <coughs> mid-1990s. Uh, the first thing they were saying when asked about their high school experience was, nobody knows who I am. And the second thing they were saying was, I don't see the relevance. I don't see why I'm being asked to do what I'm being asked to do in high school. And then finally, as we were, uh, Larry Rosenstock, a co-founder, and I were uh, going around the country uh, in a federal project called the New Urban High School Project, visiting inner city schools around the country, we were talking with some students in um, Minneapolis, in a, in a comprehensive high school there, uh, who were engaged in a career ac academy program. In this particular high school, 400 students were engaged in career academies, and another thousand students were not. Uh, we were talking with kids from the career academies, and they were raving about what they were learning in their relationships with adults in the workplace, about their career orientation, and so forth. And we asked them, we were meeting with them without other adults present, and we asked them if you could change one thing about your school. They said, some kids' attitudes. We said, well, what does that mean? And it turned out they were talking about the kids who were not in the career academy programs. And we said, so what's that about? And one of them finally said, well, look, if you're not in one of these career academies, it's kind of hard to see your future from here. So we knew that when we had a chance, we knew if we ever had a chance, we were working in a traditional 350-year-old comprehensive high school in Cambridge, Massachusetts and trying this and that and so forth and making a little headway, uh, but unable to move from the margin to the mainstream. So we knew if we ever had a chance to start our own school, it would be a school where students were known well, where they were engaged in authentic work that they themselves perceived to be authentic, and where they could see multiple pathways uh, to their future. Now, there are, we, we sort of knew what we wanted to put in, uh, and I'll talk about that in a minute, but we also knew what we didn't want to let in. Oh, and we also, of course, have been uh, inspired from the beginning by John Dewey's work, uh, and particularly his, his, uh, his understanding and his uh, statements that understanding derives from uh, activity. Uh, he was saying this kind of thing at the beginning of the 20th century, and we need to still be listening to him at the, here at the beginning of the 21st. Uh, but there, were, there are three axioms of schooling, in the States anyway, uh, that really pertain across uh, all schools and across K-12 pretty much. And the first is that you separate students according to their perceived academic ability. And we often mispredict, of course. And we often make these predictions based on race and social class in the U.S. Um, then the other thing that we do, another thing that we do is to separate hands and minds, of uh, technical from academic pursuits, and we separate uh, knowledge into separate disciplines, and our <coughs> high school kids in particular experience their day in kind of, kind of going to, to a series of silos, uh, and going home with six or seven different assignments a night and so forth, and we knew that we wanted to bring hands and minds together uh, integrate the discipline so that kids would experience a mo more coherent and more manageable 
day. And then finally, uh, the, the, uh, the third axiom of education in the U.S. anyway, is that we separate students, even high school students, from the world that they are about to enter. And we say to them, do this now and you will thank us later. <laughs>